Good afternoon, also from my side. Um, excuse me that I don't uh, speak uh, Greek language yet, so maybe there will be a time uh, I can improve further on. Um, yes, our title is a Holistic Approach on Fuel and Energy Management. Holistic is a very big word and of course everybody has its own, let's say, impression uh, what it can be depending on from which angle you are looking at it. We from Anderson Hauser, let's say we are, we are a company, let's say for field instrumentation. So we are not, let's say, uh, predominantly uh, a software company. So we live, let's say, from the development, from the production, from the sales of, uh, of field instruments. And of course, when we say, let's say, holistic approach, we have a little bit, or I would say, a slightly different angle um, to this topic. In my presentation, I would like to strive a couple of, let's say, facets. So when we say holistic, then for us it's important that uh, the customer is on board, let's say the, the requirements of the customer is on board, that from a measurement point of view we are talking about bunkering, that we're talking about fuel consumption, the two things for us, uh, they belong to together. We're talking about, let's say, real innovations, innovations not only from a technical aspect, but also from a customer perspective. So a customer must feel, yes, this is innovative for me. This helps to, let's say, to improve my, my processes. Yeah. And then last but not least, of course, we try to make the link to digitalization, yeah, because uh, for sure you need reliable, consistent data, but you also have to make them available, available to the right people which are handling the data, which can utilize them to make, let's say, the right decisions on it. Okay, let's um, start with the presentation. Um, close to the customer, we said, and I want to take a, a very interesting example where we were highly uh, involved over the last couple of years. And this is a topic of bunkering in the port of Singapore. You might have heard about, let's say, this initiative that Singapore decided a couple of years ago to go new ways uh, of bunkering. And uh, yes, if you come with new things, you have to make sure that the people who are involved in all that um, are accepting the new ways. You cannot just come and say, that's it, and everything you did in the past is or was rubbish. So you have to explain and you have to put, let's say, standards into place. And I think uh, Singapore did a very clever uh, maneuver uh, when it comes to that uh, aspect. They formed a working group uh, consisting of all stakeholders in the port of Singapore. Let's say the oil majors like Exxon, like Shell, vessel owners like Maersk, for example, barge operators, barge owners, um, authorities, and also suppliers such as us. And in these, let's say, technical committees, there were workshops and a new standard was formed in a way so that everybody can agree on. Going back, um, why changing actually from traditional sounding towards mass flow metering? Why Singapore did this move? For us as a company dealing with field instrumentation, dealing in applications related to custody transfer where measurement is highly or needs to be highly accurate, transparent, reliable, for us that's not a question. If you go today, for example, to a filling station, you fill up your car, and you will not go to the counter and start arguing about do I have to pay 20 or 40 or 50 euro. You just pay what they tell you you should pay. The same is when you're loading a ship or if you are unloading a ship. Every there, everywhere in these applications, you have highly accurate, transparent measurement. 
If you look to bunkering, where you have millions transferred per year, you don't have this. Uh, and the question is, of course, why? The, uh, the answer is, that's the application. The application includes aerated fuel oil, which normally cannot be measured accurately with a standalone meter. For us, this is the only reason why this new technology, let's, let's say, is actually new to this industry. In all other industries, you have it 20 or 30 years at least. Now, why changing from the old technology to the new? Because the measurement which exists today is not accurate, either because the equipment which is used is not accurate, or because there are a lot of opportunities or possibilities to do things wrong purposely. Uh, you have a very long chain starting from distance measurement, temperature measurement, density measurement, volume measurement until you arrive at the mass, the metric tons you actually want to charge. And this long chain gives you a hell of opportunities to do things wrong because your equipment is rubbish, it is not maintained, or let's say people want to do it wrong. And this was one of the reasons why Singapore said, okay, we have to improve our image, we want to increase the efficiency in our port, let's go a new way, let's go the way of mass flow meters. I have a statement here from uh, Niels Grönewold. He is actually a barge operator in the port of Rotterdam. He is using one of those systems since two to three years on his barges. And of course, we ask him, hey, why do you use these systems? Because in the end, it takes you also a little bit of freedom away when we want to call it like that. And he said, the reason why I'm using it is this what I wrote here, the possibility of quality claims is an unacceptable liability for us that can tie us up in risks and can, let's say, damage our reputation. I think that's quite a straightforward, uh, let's say, approach, which to me makes quite a lot of sense. Now, when we talk about innovation, I said the innovation needs to be an innovation the customer feels like it is an innovation. No? And this is what we have developed with this bunker system. Now it is actually possible to use mass flow meters in a system configuration which can handle aerated fuel oil accurately. This was not possible in the past. In the past, if you used a Coriolis meter in this application, you would not get the necessary accuracy out of it. So basically what we did, we developed over a period of three or four years at least, a system which is capable of handling these conditions using mass flow meter technology and using, let's say, patent algorithms which are compensated for the possible aeration you can have. So the system is a system which takes care about the process you have today in, in a bunkering operation. Uh, the other approach would be to say, use a standard Coriolis meter and change your processes. But this is what we have seen is not possible. We have to do it the other way around. We have to accept the process, how it is, and we have to, uh, let's say, apply the necessary measure to it. So the result out of that, innovation uh, utilizing mass flow meter systems with smart means, that means compensation for aeration, implementation of practical operation procedures, yeah, and establishing a standard so that everybody is doing it exactly in the same way. Only then you get acceptance over, let's say, all the stakeholders. And by the way, when you look at this picture over there, this is how such a mass flow meter looks like on a barge. The same can, of course, also installed on a seagoing vessel. 
because if you put it onto a seagoing vessel, you actually have now two measures against one measure. You have your tank level in your vessel, you have the mass flow meter on your vessel uh, compared to the barge uh, which supplies, supplies the fuel. So it's quite a reasonable good negotiation power in case there is still disputes in the praxis. Innovation means also transparency. When you look at a bunker process, how it was, let's say, when you do it traditionally. You do the opening sounding, that's your starting point, and then you're getting pumped eight or nine hours, the fuel oil, into the fuel tanks of the vessel, and then you do a closing sounding. During these eight and nine hours, you have no clue what is going on. You have no information about temperature, pressure, density, flow rates, pump stops, or whatever. With this new system, you have a complete transparency. What you see here, these are so-called metering profiles. Metering profiles which are created when the delivery is completed. So you have a chart which shows you exactly the process parameters from starting the bunkering operation till the end of the bunkering operation. And I put two examples here. You see here this black curve. This is the aeration. So this was an example where you had aeration from the start till the end. Yeah? So purposely there was air introduced into the fuel oil. People also call it cappuccino. You see the same here. There are a few, a few spikes and a little bit at the beginning, this is standard bunkering operation. And of course, with these profiles, you can easily, let's say, differentiate between good and bad bunkering or good and bad delivery. And this is then how it looks like, let's say, in a vessel, in a seagoing vessel. You see it here, a container vessel. You see here the Coriolis mass flow meter. What you see here, this is electrical heating, because typically we are dealing with heavy fuel oil, and we want to make sure that the heavy fuel oil doesn't stick at the measuring tubes in order not to alter the measuring result. And then you have the so-called bunkering computer, which, let's say, stores all the data, which gives you the possibility of a ticket printing and the metering profile printing. Until now, all standalone units on the vessel. Holistic means, of course, also everybody needs to have a benefit. If the stakeholders don't have a benefit, it will not fly. And of course, when you look at the different uh, stakeholders you have, you have the barge operators, you have the vessels, you have the ports, you have the fuel suppliers. All of them, they have the possibility to have a benefit out of it. Yeah? Typically, the benefit is related to financials. That is clear. It is a financial solution. It's not, let's say, a technical solution like a fuel consumption uh, solution. Here we're talking about uh, financial solutions in terms of paying the right amount of money for the received quantity. Now going towards a technical subject, going away from bunkering, going towards fuel consumption. If we want to be more efficient on a vessel, of course, we have to put measures in place. We have to change operation. We have to change, let's say, the vessel as such, the way how the vessel is operated. But before you can do this, you need reliable data. You need accurate data. Yeah? This is, let's say, the start of everything. You can transfer data, thousands of data, but if these are rubbish data, then you will not be, let's say, wiser afterwards. So that means the starting point of everything is reliable, let's say, measurement of the fuel consumption. We typically utilize mass flow meters. The beauty of, the, of mass flow meters is they are, let's say, compact from an installation point of view. You don't have to consider a lot of, let's say, things when you're installing it. It has space everywhere and it measures the mass 
directly. So you don't have any, let's say, uh, difficulties or possibilities of calculating wrong the mass you want to measure. What you see here, this is a start uh, art of the uh, state of the art mass flow meter, providing mass flow very accurately and having also, let's say, very interesting interfaces in order to give the data further. Yeah? We are not only looking, let's say, at the mass flow, we maybe look also at the density, or we are looking at diagnostics. Thinking about a vessel, a night, what is a nightmare when dealing with a vessel? This is service. Because they are moving targets, they are not, let's say, always in the neighborhood. And if something goes wrong, you prefer to know before it goes wrong, or at least if it goes wrong, that you know what it is before you go to the vessel. Uh, and with interfaces like Modbus or like Ethernet, you have the possibility to give all these data remotely to the shore side, to the people who have to deal with the service to know, okay, when I go to the vessel, I need this and this and this spare part, or maybe I can already troubleshoot uh, from the home office and I save the time and the money to go to a vessel. All this is possible with these, let's say, intelligent flow meters. Looking at holistic, of course, we are looking along, let's say, the life cycle of such, let's say, a flow meter. It gets nicely, let's say, manufactured, designed, calibrated, installed. But the vessel, let's say, lasts 30, 40, or whatever, how many years. And you want to have the meter accurate not only when you're installing it, you want to have it accurate also after, let's say, 10 years. But what you don't want on a vessel, you don't want to dismantle it, to send it back to the factory, to getting it recalibrated. So we take attention to that in order to introduce a new, you can say, a new feature, a new functionality, which is called heartbeat technology. That means this is an integrated self-checking uh, circuits in the flow meter, which are calibrated in the factory, showing all these parameters here. And as long as these parameters are in the right range, we are confident, we can say, the mass flow meter is operating in its defined, let's say, error limits. And the, and the beauty, and I come to this later on, when we now make the link, let's say, with digitalization, this cannot be only done by a service technician which goes to the device, which presses the button. This can be initiated from shore. Yeah? So you have a lot of possibilities let's say, with these new technologies in order to reduce your, your life cycle costs on the one side and on the other side to make sure you have reliable data all the time. A few installation pictures here of uh, transfer flow meters for HFO, MGO, and here you see the onboard uh, cabinets um, with the HMIs. Now we have this nice data, reliable, accurate, what to do with it. Measuring the fuel consumption, so what? You have to put it into perspective in order to get an idea, what does this data tell me? Yeah? And then simple example is just putting it into a relation, let's say, with the travel distance. This is already much more worth than just the fuel consumption data on its own. So that means we have to get the possibility, the opportunity to, let's say, create meaningful data. Only then the data are really of value for us. And this is, of course, something which is possible with the CM box of Setel we are using, utilizing in our solution where we can pull in all kind of, let's say, data to uh, create meaningful uh, KPIs later on. 
system integration, yes, there is a, let's say, a whole variety possible of system integration. We can start with a very simple onboard uh, visualization with a, with a recorder. Uh, with nice diagrams where you already have much more information than just the data as such. But we can go also the next step. And uh, this brings me now to the point where we combine the reliable data we get from our mass flow meters, from the fuel consumption side, but also from the bunkering side. Yeah? very precise, reliable data you can trust. And now we want to work with it. Uh, we we want to use them to improve the efficiency of a vessel. We are not creating data that we create data. Yeah? Of course, for us, it's fine. But I think for the, for the user, it doesn't really, uh, doesn't really help. So we need them in a way that we can trust them. So we need to have them in an automated way, in a, in, a, in, a, in a frequent way, and therefore we are utilizing, for example, the CM box from uh, Settel, which uh, creates, let's say, automated reporting you can trust. Yeah? And uh, this from us, this is our holistic view to, uh, let's say, fuel consumption or fuel management that we are starting with very reliable data, but that we are not stopping there, that we prepare them, that we are offering them in a way that people can make the right decisions with it. So when I, let's say, summarize uh, our, let's say, topic, our theme, starting with the proximity to our customer, I think this is always core. Of course, we cannot always have the super duper innovation. This is also a little bit related to the subject as such, but at least we are striving for that. Accurate, reliable data, we, we said before. Um, there, our goal, of course, is let's say or our focus is on Coriolis mass flow meters because they offer so much more, uh, let's say, uh, benefits compared to other technologies. In the end, everybody needs to be happy utilizing this uh, equipment. We need the support over the entire, let's say, uh, life cycle. And again here, um, the instruments are capable of giving these diagnostics. And um, with a platform like uh, the CM box, we have the possibility to make this data available, also, for example, to service engineers, so that we can react timely. KPIs, as I said, are more or less the, the basis for, for all decisions. And last but not least, the data need to be automated so they need to be, let's say, free of failures, of misinterpretations. And I think if we can put this into a nice uh, package, then we are already a big step ahead to what is utilized, let's say, nowadays, still on vessels, also on barges. Thank you very much for your time.